Hi everyone, today we're going to be working on some more AI pathfinding. Um, previously we implemented a prototype using the Navigation Region 2D, uh, but this time we're going to be doing so using the tile set navigation data. So we'll be able to build this little prototype where I can spawn apples around the map and my little monster will follow around and pick them up. So we have the blank starting point here, if I play this, you can see I can still move around, I can spawn apples but my enemy monster has no way to pathfind to it. So let's right click on our parent node. We're gonna add a child and search for tile map. We'll hit create. And I am going to go to the inspector and create a new tile set. Have to click it twice to actually open it up. I'm gonna set my tile size. I'm working with a 32 by 32 sprite sheet. And then I can actually come to the bottom and hit tile set. And then I can drag my sprite sheets uh, and select yes to uh, import them into the uh, viewport here. Uh, with that done, we can actually begin to build a simple map. So I'm going to go to the tile map uh, option at the bottom. I'm going to select a green tile. I'm going to go with a rectangle and I'm just going to build out a quick prototype. Then I'm going to select a corner and make this look just a wee bit nicer so and then I'll maybe I'll do the edges and then it looks a little bland in the middle so we can select a grass texture here add a bit of scatter set my scatter to maybe 10 and then I'll do an inside rectangle and then it adds a little bit of variance there now um, we're going to be working with uh, some additional sprite assets here to actually act as obstacles, uh, but I can't place those on top of this because it will destroy the, uh, the tiles. So we're going to need to create multiple layers, uh, which is pretty common. Uh, in this example, we'll just work with two layers. I'm going to create a ground layer and then I'm going to add another element and I'm just going to call this the obstacles layer. Uh, I can then select the layers here. Um, if I go to obstacles, I can go to my asset sheet and let's actually build the house. And I'm gonna select my pencil tool, turn scatter off, and then I'll just add a nice little house right here. I can then select the tree, and then I can paint some trees in randomly here. And I think that'll be fine for what we're trying here. So now if I play the scene, it doesn't look so boring, there's a little bit of variance here. I can still spawn apples, but again, there's no navigation data yet, so my enemy cannot move around. To add the actual navigation map under the tile map, go to the inspector and in the tile map settings, there is a navigation layer. Just to add an element and that's pretty much good. You just now need to paint the uh, navigation layer onto the tiles that you want it to navigate across. So we can do that from the tile set settings at the bottom, select paint, I'm going to select the uh, green tile here, I used that one, uh, and then I'm going to go into uh, selecting a property and select navigation layer zero. And if I select this, you'll notice it turns like a light blue. That means it has navigation data. Now if I come to my debugger and select visible navigation, uh, we can play the scene. Not every tile will have navigation, but you can notice when I place my apple. Uh, the little orc is able to move around. So let's go ahead and add navigation to this right here. And then I think that should complete the entirety of the map. So now I can lay apples wherever. And my little orc will be able to follow around and pick them up. If I lay him outside the map, he won't be able to quite make it. But that's okay. So now we need to work on actually blocking um, the enemy from going through obstacles and also the player because um, that really doesn't make a lot of sense here. Uh, we can do that with a physics layer. So in the tile map settings, go to physics, simply add a layer, and then in the three dots you want to select edit layer names and you want to define um, some style that makes sense for your prototype or your project. Um, you can see I have uh, four layers. I have the player, the enemy, the items, 
uh, and the obstacles. And let me actually hide myself so I'm not blocking anything. Um, but yeah, so kind of set this up however you want it, but you know, this is gonna be the collision settings that I'm using. And then in case I was blocking before, this is where we're at uh, editing the layers. I added a ground layer and an obstacles layer. All right, so now that I added the physics layer, I need to define which layer this one is. This is gonna be the obstacles. And then I need to tell the obstacles what to block. So I want them to block the player and I want them to block the enemy. Simply creating that is not enough though, because you'll notice I can still go through the house and the trees. Just like with the navigation, we need to paint um, the physics onto the tiles. So go to the tile set editor, and then we are going to select our asset sprite sheet. And we'll select paint. Instead of navigation layer, I'm going to do the physics layer. And then I can just go ahead and begin to block off um, various items here. And then I will probably speed this part up actually. Okay, I think that is basic enough and it will get the effect out um, that we're going for. So now if I just play the scene with that, I can no longer walk through the house. I can go through the top here, but I want to do Y sorting to actually hide the player for that. And then same thing with the trees. I can't go through them at the base of the trunk. But if I select uh, an apple, the player or the uh, orc is still going to get stuck. So we still have uh, an issue. So what we actually need to do now is remove the navigation data underneath these layers. So the way we can do that is you can, you know, you can physically delete the uh, uh, the data if you go into like tile settings and you go to the ground. You could actually delete the tiles underneath, um, and that'll work fine too. Um, to re to remove the actual um, navigation data. Uh, another way to do it, you can actually script it out. So if we go to the tile map and add a quick script, and then I'm gonna to go to my scripts folder here. There is a um, two wonderful functions built into Godot. Uh, it's called, uh, the first one's use tile data runtime update. And the second one is just the last part of that tile data runtime update. So what you do is you use this function here to actually define um, a true or false on particular tile sets and you can there's a few different functions or methods you can use to do that i'm using the get use cells by id um, in the previous example i had more layers in this one let me minimize this and actually bring up my layers we only have two layers right so i have a layer zero which is ground and i have the layer one which is obstacles so realistically i don't need these options right here and then we can set this to layer one or id one and what that's going to do is it's basically going to go through and everything on the obstacles layer which if we switch to obstacles basically all this stuff here the trees and the house it's going to remove uh, the navigation data underneath it well it's going to set it to true and then the second function will basically use the data from the first function to go through and set the navigation polygons to be um, false, basically to be uh, zero, zeros it out. So now if we go into the map and uh, play the prototype, you'll notice that the, the house no longer has um, any navigation data on here. So now when I actually spawn an apple around and directly on the other side, the enemy orc knows to go around. And typically, this is just a quick prototype to demonstrate the effect. Um, a better way to do this would be to uh, set your obstacles to be just the physics layer. So just the trunk and the part of the house that you want. Um, and then the other layers would be on a separate layer to where they would still have navigation data on them. Because um, ideally you want, uh, you want the player to be able to use like Y sorting and actually go around and be hidden by the objects and you can actually spawn an apple and have the enemy be hidden by that. So you kind of want uh, 
this sort of look. Which I remove debugging for this for now. You can see you can actually, whoops, you can still get stuck. And if you have that sort of issue, sometimes it makes sense to make sure you're in floating and get your, your minimum wall slide angle to zero. And that can sometimes help sort that out. And let me add in the debugging. Now your enemy will have to have the navigation agent 2D attached to be able to use this, by the way. And we can enable the debugging here. So now if I spawn this, you can see he can make his way and navigate around obstacles. Pretty good. And it's a quick and easy setup. It's not too bad.